Well, hello and welcome to another in the series of these videos where we're looking at the quantum trading indicators in more detail. And here we're focused in on the quantum VRSI indicator. And in particular, looking at the much slower time frames of the daily, the weekly and the monthly. So we're really looking at this from a longer term perspective of swing or trend trading or from an out and out investment perspective where we're looking to to buy and hold the stock maybe for some uh, extended period. I hope by now you've watched some of the earlier videos I recorded where we looked at the indicator working very much on an intraday basis on the faster time frames. We also looked at it for uh, futures where it works in much the same way. We looked at that on Globex. And just to give you the context here, we are about an hour, just an hour and 20 minutes before the US Open. So as you can see with the little orange boxes on each of the charts, we're currently in the pre-market session here. So volume's gonna be relatively thin, but as we're on the slower time frames, it's not gonna impact these hugely at any rate. The Chart setup, as I say, is, is very simple. But once again, I stress the importance of using volume price analysis because volume price analysis and the VRSA, VRSI indicator are very much a blended approach to be used together. Volume price analysis anyway is our underlying methodology. And what the VRSI indicator does is really tease out uh, the another aspect of volume and it gives us volume from a pressure perspective. Pressure is a word I'm sure you've heard many times across the other videos that I've recorded, but it really does um, explain, it does, um, it, it does encapsulate the concepts of the indicator in a very clear way using that particular term. So we've used it throughout because with pressure, what we're looking at is the strength of the trend, whether that trend has got momentum, either to the upside or the downside. In addition to that, whether we're seeing a congestion phase or whether there is little or no pressure. So it is all about pressure. And just to give you the key components of the indicator, which I've covered in detail elsewhere, but essentially there are three primary components. The first is at the fulcrum line here where we cross from sentiment, which is bullish to bearish, or alternatively back from bearish to bullish. Secondly, and self-evident from the indicator are the changes in color, where we have a dark color, which signifies strongly bullish or strongly bearish sentiment, and a weaker color, which represents, as you would expect, a weakening of that sentiment. So we have four colors, basically, two strong and two lighter. We have the light pink here for a weakening of bearish sentiment, and we have the light blue, which you can see here which is a weakening of the bullish sentiment. And what I've done in this workspace, as indeed I've done on all the others, is to split out volume price analysis below. So we have identical timeframes, but purely with volume. So we can read the chart from a volume price analysis perspective and then marry it up with those above, which uh, are, are shown with the VRSI indicator itself. In this uh, video, we're going to look at seven stocks, all of which I'm sure will be common names, very well known to you. We're going to look at Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla, Meta, and AMD, Advanced Micro Devices. So seven very popular, very well known, very liquid stocks. And the only other thing I would add to uh, that before we dig in is using multiple timeframes is essential when using any aspect of a chart, whether trading or investing, and even more so here, because what we're witnessing in our faster time frame, if it's a change in trend, if it's a reversal, ultimately, if that trend has momentum and has strength and has pressure associated with it, then it will migrate through into our slower time frames, in this case, the weekly and the monthly. But that principle is universal. And it doesn't matter whether we're on a one minute, two minute, three minute combination, or as here, we're on a one day, one week, one month combination. That principle is universal. And the analogy that I've used so many times is that of throwing a pebble into a pond. The ripples move out to the sides of the pond, and it is very much 
that concept, that idea of a ripple. You can think of it as a wave, an incoming wave, which has a relentless momentum to it. And if that momentum builds up, then that wave will move a long, long way or that ripple will move a long, long way. And that's what it's about. It's about identifying what is going on our fastest, whether that fastest is a one minute chart or a one day chart, and then seeing how that that strength, the strength of that momentum then migrates and dissipates and expands, if you like, through into the slower timeframes. And that is why we use multiple timeframes on every occasion, whether it's indicator based or whether it's purely chart based the principles are the same and of course we apply the same principles when we're looking at our vpa analysis as well so i think that's the uh, that's the introduction covered and now let's uh, start and the first one i've got here as you can see is apple which has been interesting in the last few days so perhaps if we start on the left hand side with our daily chart let's pop that up full size there we go And let's just pull the price action up into full view. There we are, so you can see the full trend. It's been very evident that uh, over the last uh, four months or so, we've had this uh, very nice trend. But I have to say that it is a trend that is, that is not one that is rising steeply and sharply. And this is a characteristic of the indicator itself, of the VRSI indicator, in that when you see a trend which is rising at this sort of angle, 45 degrees, quite sharply in other words, then the height of the pressure bars will be significant and certainly would be higher than they are here. Because the angle of the trend here is, let's say, approximately 30 degrees, something like that. So it's relatively shallow in the in the angle that it is climbing yes of course it is a, a bullish trend it's climbing very steadily very nicely but it's very even paced and that is reflected in the height of the bars down here because you don't see any very tall bars they're a nice size they are relatively consistent if you put a ruler through this lot it would i guess the average would be somewhere around here we do get punctuations of uh, injections where we get earnings coming in, of course, which we've had over here, which I'll come to in a moment. And of course, they inject volume and they inject pressure as well. But generally speaking, as you can see, we have a consistent trend here. We've got minor pullbacks. Those minor pullbacks are always represented with a little bit of, uh, first of all, change in color and then a reduction in the height of the pressure bars, as you can see. And we see that throughout. But the the presence above the trend, the, the fulcrum point of zero, has been almost universally maintained. We only dipped once just here and here, very marginal, really telling us that um, this, is, this is not going to uh, develop into anything strong as far as we can tell at that point. And it's immediately reversed with a very strong uh, bullish injection of pressure here to signal that to us. So... The takeaway from this daily it, in terms of the upwards trend is that when you're looking at these trends, look at the angle that it is, uh, it is trading at. Is it going up sharply, 45 degrees, 60 degrees? Is it relatively flat as here? It's about 30 degrees or so. And that will be reflected in the momentum behind it and the height of the pressure bars. And as I say, we get uh, rising pressure bars when we get a little bit of a a steepening of that trend, as you can see here, and then we flatten off into a bit of congestion, so we drop away, and then we move into a more even paced rise, and we move back to a, a slightly more, a lower level for, for the bars as we move higher. Then we come to the last few days, and needless to say, we have seen a reversal from the upper side to the downside, so we've gone from bullish to bearish now, and we've gone, interestingly, immediately from a light color blue to a dark brick red which uh, signals very bearish sentiment not a big tall bar to start with but it does develop into that as we can see over the last four days no great surprise we see the strong reversal we've come off uh, roughly to uh, roughly 20 dollars in terms of the share price itself and that has been signaled with a big increase in the pressure bars so it really demonstrates to you again this uh, concept, this idea of the height of the bars, which is absolutely paramount. 
And the reason that these are very tall and really stand out is because the the bearish uh, trend there, the fall in those four or five candles is not quite vertical, but it's pretty close to it. Whereas the trend rise here is very shallow and flat. So it is this direct relationship between the angles of trends and the pressure bars, which is all revealing. So that's on the daily. And I'll come on to the volume uh, VPA perspectives of Apple in a moment. But let me just run through the top line first. This is the weekly for Apple. Just pull that up a little bit. There we go. And just squeeze these down so we've got them all in, in view. There we are. So now we're looking at the uh, weekly time frame. And of course, it's punctuated every uh, every few weeks. We have earnings and dividends, uh, which I really like on TradingView because it shows you instantly where they are. So we're punctuated with those. So it's no surprise to see uh, punctuated uh, pressure bars coming in. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It depends on the reaction of the market. Just pull that down. That one there is even taller over here. And again, it demonstrates, first of all, the concept of the pressure bars aligned with the trend. And by that, I mean the when we get a falling trend here, we get rising pressure bars, signifying that that trend has momentum. It has pressure behind it. And that concept is precisely the same as we use when we when we apply our VPA methodology, because what we want to see in this scenario where we've got a falling market, a strongly falling market, we want to see very strong rising volume associated with it, which confirms that volume and price are in agreement over the trend. And it is exactly the same here. We've got the similar sort of event here. We've got a nicely sharply rising trend to the upside and we have rising pressure bars. And in this widespread up candle at the top, we get a big, big uh, injection of pressure at the top there. Similar idea here, we've got rising, rising pressure all blue. So it's really confirming to us at that point that this is a strong trend, all green. There's no red candles in there. We're just rising steadily. And we came off very quickly from this bearish trend. We went into congestion and these two candle, uh, these two bars here really fell away quite quickly from our high bars here down to our fulcrum into the first of our bullish uh, pressure bars here, which was very low, but then up into the other three. And then equally, we reverse back into bearish again with these only takes two. And the first one up here, nice big up thrust at the top of that rally. That would have been a standout candle for us. Similar sorts of things here. You've got standout candles, more here associated with good volume. That would give us a very strong clue that uh, this was really looking to set up for at, at, at least a congestion phase and at worst a full-blown reversal and really confirm with candles like this as well as we move move off to the downside and on down we go into this extended uh, bearish phase. Even the the rally here, which was quite strong, we only got a very small uh, blue candle, dark blue nevertheless, but very small and really telling us that, okay, it, it doesn't look particularly strong at the moment. Let's see what happens. And the next candle comes in and it's brick red and we're off into the bearish phase once more. And it's only when we come down through this phase of, of at price action at the left uh, at the end here. And you, again, you can see purely by looking at the candles, you can see from the wicks to the lower bodies that we would have seen buying for sure. Some stopping volume coming in here, accumulation, some buying coming in before we set off in a new campaign off to the upside. And what's nice about this particular trend here is it's a, it's, it's a nice angle. It's 40, 45 degrees, something like this. It's nice and steady. It's even paced. We are also seeing um, another key element of the VRSI indicator is the height of the bars in comparison to one another. So we're not seeing huge moves like this, but we are seeing very consistent moves. So when you see consistency like this, and it's consistency not just in the darker colors, but also in the lighter colors here. In other words, where we see a weakening of that sentiment, it's not weakening where we're suddenly going to collapse back to the fulcrum and move into bearish territory. It's simply telling us, yes, we've had a little bit of weakening, but the height of those bars, can you see how they remain at a very similar height, which is great to see. 
And again, looking at the average, it would be here somewhere. So it's really telling us loud and clear that what we're seeing here is a very consistent trend and, uh, and something that uh, you know we shouldn't be too concerned about. Now, the reason obviously we get this, this sharp reversal here is based on we had an earnings announcement. And of course, something that we all have to contend with when we're investing is what do we do with the constant round of earnings, which which appears every three months or so? Nothing we can do about it. We have to accept it as part and parcel. And of course, we get uh, good news, which helps us on occasion, and we get bad news, which doesn't. So it's part and parcel, and we have to accept it for what it is, and we have to decide how to manage it. Do we are we going to sell that stock ahead of the news? Are we going to ride through it? If we're going to ride through it, how are we going to protect ourselves? Are we going to um, uh, are we going to uh, buy some options? How are we going to um, protect the the downside? And that's all part and parcel of decision making. What's interesting here, certainly looking at, looking at it from the uh, VRSI perspective, is that the Pressure bars here are relatively muted. They're not very tall. And that is telling us that potentially this is simply a reversal based on some uh, some earnings news. But it's really not telling us that there's a lot of pressure behind that move. It's telling us there's a lot of there's not much momentum uh, being injected into that move lower. And indeed, I know this is only a very minor thing, but if you look at the pre-market here, closed last night was 178 spot 85, and the pre were at 179 spot 14. Now, of course, one one swallow doesn't make a summer, but I think it's indicative of of what we're seeing here that the indicator itself is not suggesting as it as well it might. It might have uh, triggered something like this, a very tall pressure bar, or even one like this. But it hasn't, and that's interesting, and certainly giving us a, a strong hint that perhaps this is not all as, as bad as it appears, and that maybe this has been a uh, an opportunity for the market makers to frighten the, uh, the 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 strong holders here out of their strong positions to accumulate more stock, and basically there will be a reversal back into the bullish trend in due course. And indeed, if we go up onto the monthly, and this really brings into focus the whole business of, let me just pull that up there. There we go. This really brings into focus the whole business of what your time horizon is, because as you can see, we're now on the monthly chart. And as of yet, we have not seen a, a rotation into a bearish sentiment, which you wouldn't do because you wouldn't expect it on, on one day or one week. It's going to take a longer period to uh, trigger that. So again, it just highlights the whole business. I'm just going to pull those down. There we are, because they're quite tall. I'll push that up a bit. There we are. It's a very tall bar there. Um, so it, it again, it highlights this whole business of what is your time horizon? What is it you're trying to do? If you're looking at this over a monthly basis, then absolutely fine and and you're you will probably or an investment perspective where you're looking at it over years then the reaction we've seen to the earnings you may well just simply view that as okay it's another earnings uh, announcement that we've ridden through okay the stock has fallen in price a little bit but i'm holding this for the next 10 15 years or whatever it may be and you're really not too fussed about it and really that's what it comes down to it is your perception your time horizon and how you view any reaction in the market and, and of course the the reaction, the price reaction that occurs in a particular trend as a result. So it's a very I wanted to start with Apple because it's very interesting at this point. It's really um, just highlights quite a few issues that we have to deal with. And what it also shows you here in this uh, reversal here in this in this bearish reversal to the downside again whilst it was whilst we had the bars rising we had pressure rising um, punctuated with with little recoveries as well it never really created a huge sense of very negative uh, pressure for the for the stock 
And once we start to see this occurring, that really gives us the confidence that perhaps you know, we are seeing the, the bullish sentiment return. So it will be interesting to see over the next few weeks and months how far this declines, whether it declines further or simply flattens off. Because bear in mind also, and remember we're just looking at one chart here and one indicator, we are now coming down to what potentially could be quite a substantial area of support for the stock. And if that's the case, then it may well bounce off this platform here, which is a very, very solid platform indeed on the monthly time frame. And the price will continue on up to $200 and beyond in due course. So I thought we'd start with Apple there because it's very interesting given the, the last few days of price action, what's been going on. And of course, as always, earnings, news, fundamental news, data, anything you like is always a tremendous catalyst for the market makers to step in, to frighten everyone to, to death and to then take advantage, which indeed was what occurred in, in, in the middle of COVID. Uh, we saw the reaction there. Let's just pop the uh, the volume chart up for, I'll just pull that up. There we go. Uh, Self-evident with COVID here, you can see, look at the extreme volume we had. This was March uh, 2020 when COVID was really just taking hold globally. The news medias were full of it. And of course, this is an ideal opportunity for the market makers to really cash in big time, which is what they did, not only on stocks, but everywhere. And uh, we then see the reversal the following month and off we go. And it really does demonstrate the power of volume. You've got another example over here, ton of volume coming in, huge amount. We've got stopping volume coming in here. We've got narrowing spreads, really high volume here. These are all VPA 101 lessons, but lessons that you use in combination with the uh, the chart above with the VRSI indicator. And indeed, if I step down onto, let's just pull that up again, resize everything as we do. There we go. Um, what we see here is also interesting. These are the last few days of price action. Let's look at the volume. Yes, we have rising volume. But in, in yesterday's price action, we saw the volume falling away somewhat. And in addition to that, we saw a narrowing of the spread here on the candle. Now, I'm not suggesting at this point that is stopping volume, but certainly the fact that the spread has narrowed somewhat, we've got a wick to the lower body. Yes, we have wicks to the upper body, but there is definitely buying in there and substantial buying too, that it will, it's, it's suggestive of a stock that is coming to potentially a pause point. What we want to see now, of course, is probably some further congestion. We want to see good volume under the next few candles, probably narrower spreads, wicks to the lower body, that sort of type of thing. And then ultimately a recovery with sustained volume rising as the as the stock rises away from that particular area of price. So I'm sorry we spent quite a long time on Apple, but it's uh, it's an interesting it's at a very interesting uh, I wouldn't say watershed, but it's certainly at an interesting point and also indicative, of course, of what we have to face at every earnings announcement. And whilst we tend to think of Stocks like Apple and Amazon always having uh, stellar results and, and uh, wonderful news and, and everything in the garden being rosy. Uh, it's not always the case, and as was the case here. So it's something that we all ha always have to be mindful of and not simply take as red. Okay, that's Apple. Let's move on to the next one, which I've got again is, um, I'm sure one that uh, we all know, Amazon. There we go. Okay, let's uh, let's move through these a little more rapidly. Let's start with the daily. I'll run through the, all the time frames as, as quickly as I can. There we are. Um, and again, m perhaps making the point that I um, uh, made in the uh, introductory videos there about Apple, or the introductory um, part of, uh, part about Apple, is the the trend here is is in fact it's flattening here, which is even more interesting. So. What we're seeing is some uh, initial momentum here, which is fine. But then as we get to the top here, as we move into July and into the summer, it's really flattened off. So we've got almost an arc forming here. And that is really reflected in terms of the height of the bars. We've got predominantly blue, which is what we expect. We're punctuated with uh, uh, dark blue and light blue, but a good consistent height through here. But then as the trend starts to weaken and flatten, 
then so does the height of the bars. And it's very clear here. And then as we move into this phase here, we, we actually revert below the, uh, the fulcrum point into some bearish, um, bearish pressure bars here. And then as we come out this side, we get some earnings and injection of pressure and volume, as you would expect. And we then see the gap up from this level right the way up here. And we would expect to see that associated with good, strong volume. If it's a genuine move, we need to see volume. And we're certainly seeing that reflected in terms of the pressure candles as well, the pressure bars rather as well. So it just builds on, on the points I was making earlier, really, about the, about the indicator, how it works, what we're looking for, how it works with uh, VPA as well. I'll just uh, realign these so they're, so they're brought back into focus for you. There we go. That one's even taller. There we are. Very tall. And we can see here we had the trend lower, really confirmed here with these uh, brick red pressure bars. Moving through here, still maintained, but then it drops away relatively quickly. The uh, reversal phase doesn't last very long. The height of the bars is, is relatively low and reverts very quickly back down to the fulcrum. And then we see the rising pressure bars, which is what we always want to see in a falling trend in exactly the same way as we do with volume. Into this section here where the pressure bars were very similar heights are really helping us to stay in, confirming that bearish sentiment is, is maintaining its, uh, its upper hand at that point before we see quite a quick move back here into this, this congestion phase here, lots of weakness here, candle here, not terribly strong. But then we start to see the move away and the, the angle here of the trend is, is, is relatively flat, it's not particularly pronounced and we're seeing a nice rally here, nice rising, strongly, uh, strongly rising uh, pressure bars here in dark blue and into a phase of price action, which is developing very nicely now on the weekly chart where these are many, very much the same height. We had a little bit of a dip here, but we're back to a similar sort of height. So again, that is confirming for us that we are looking at a, a, uh, a trend that is, uh, has got good momentum to it. It's got good pressure in there. And despite the fact that we can see up here, the pre is uh, opening a little bit lower, 140 spot 77 down from 142.22. Nevertheless, this looks like a trend which has has got a sustained momentum to it by virtue of the fact that the pressure bars are all pretty much the same height. So that's on the week. Let's have a look at the month. Let's pop that one up. Let's pull that into focus for you. There we go. Just resize this a little bit because we've got some big bars there. There we go. And again, really just confirming the points I've been making. Strong trend, strongly rising trend, strongly rising pressure bars, all dark blue. Excellent. The more measured, even pace trend here starts to accelerate here. So we see a rise in the pressure bars. When it's over here, yes, it's bullish and it's rising in a, in a very even paced way. But then when we see the injection of pressure here, it rises more steeply. In the congestion phases, this is what we always expect to see. A lot of two-way price action here, up and down, around the fulcrum. Nothing really going very far. Spread to narrow, as you would expect. Really a full-blown conge congestion phase. And then, of course, we've got to be patient and wait. Wait for some signals for a breakout. There's certainly some buying coming in under that particular candle. And then off we go. And breakout trading is a fantastic way to trade. I've referenced it so many times. It really is. And if you can be patient and wait, We've almost got an ascending triangle here in terms of the upper level is flat, the lower level is rising. So we are re we are seeing a situation where the, the pressure tests to the downside or the price tests to the downside are increasing. They're rising all the time, other than this one where we saw buying coming in and then we break out through this, this ceiling of resistance. Fantastic. Happy days. If that trend is supported with good volume, and I'm sure it is because we've got a good pressure bar here, then we're off to the races and we can jump in accordingly. And we place our stops below all this price action, which is giving us great downside protection. As we reach the top of that trend and we start to flatten, then the pressure diminishes, which is what we expect to see. We go right the way down here throughout this phase. A lot of weakness coming in here with these uh, big, big upthrust candles here. We had the first one here, another one here, another one here, third one here. We had a two bar there another one, another one, and so on and so forth, really telling you loud and clear 
this stock is not going anywhere and is likely to weaken from that point. And indeed it does. And then we move down into a very strongly bearish phase here, denoted with our rising pressure bars as well. And right towards the end here, we're now starting to recover. And we're seeing not, I have to say, very strongly rising bars here on the monthly. They're all at the same height, but they're certainly not indicative of anything over here, for example. So yes, we are seeing that rising, but maybe a warning sign there that the pressure bars are not terribly tall. So perhaps this trend is not developing. It's certainly not developing with the strength we saw here, but nevertheless, we are in an uptrend, but one to keep an eye on, certainly from a monthly perspective. So that's Amazon. Now let's move into the next one, which is Microsoft. Let's click on that one. There we go. Let's just have a look at run very quickly run through these on the daily. Let's pull that down, resize. There we go. That's it. And again, very much of the the same sort of lessons here. We've got a trend that's rising quite steadily, but the pressure there, we had an injection there on earnings, but the pressure there is really falling away quite steadily. Another injection there, a little bit more there, but it, and now we start to move into a congestion phase where we've got uh, a lot of uh, up and down price action, pretty narrow spreads around the fulcrum. We get an injection here again, but it falls, look how quickly it falls away back down to the fulcrum and then we're down into bearish. And what's interesting about this on the daily at the moment is look at the height of the bars. We're in dark brick red, fine. But the pink bars, the weakening of that sentiment doesn't look like it's weakening a great deal at the moment because we are uh, trading at pretty much the same height in terms of the pressure. So the signal here is telling us that, OK, we've got bearish sentiment. Yes, for sure. We're in a downtrend. But it looks as though that is being maintained for the time being with further bearish uh, moves to come. In addition to that, we've come down to a potentially supportive price point here. So that would certainly be of interest because if that is breached from a support perspective, and this is what we all, we, we're not just using one indicator, we use multiple indicators, of course, in all time frames. If that level is breached, then we could see that stock move substantially lower once it breaks through that floor of what is acting as support right now. So very interesting analysis here on the purely by looking at the height of the pressure bars and what perhaps they are revealing. Let's go to the weekly. Here we are. Lots of bearish, uh, lots of bullish uh, momentum here. Let's just resize that for you. Nice injection here. We're moving steadily higher. But then, of course, we get this big up thrust at the top here. So it's no surprise to see the stock selling off after that particular candle. And I'm sure it was associated with decent volume. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, and once again, this trend lower was not extreme. It wasn't moving sharply. It wasn't a price waterfall. It was just a general decline in the stock um, over an extended period. And that's really mirrored by the the pressure bars through here, not extreme, decent height, just looking to maintain that bearish momentum. And then we get an injection of, of bullish momentum here, um, much steeper rise in terms of the trend. But now we're starting to flatten off. We flattened off very quickly as well. As you can see, we're almost back down to the fulcrum on that particular time frame. Let's have a quick look at the monthly. Let's just pop that up full size. We've got this very demonstrable uh, up thrust candle up at the top here, pretty much in the same way we had here when we saw this sharp sell off as well. Again, nicely rising trend, lovely rising uh, pressure bars here, supportive of that wonderful trend. And if you're an investor, fantastic stuff to see. It really, really does give you confidence to hold for the longer term and very much flatter down here because this trend was at a, a lower angle, of course. Uh, we get the bearish bearish sentiment uh, develop in here. That's then reversed, and we get a nice, strong uh, rising pressure bars here, really confirming the strength of that. But this is a worry, so it would be interesting to see how that develops in the longer term. And that's really just looking at one candle. And if we pop over the pop open the uh, the volume price perspective charts, there we are. 
got some good strong volume under that particular candle so and certainly higher than we saw under here when we saw this reversal so higher volume here and that suggests that we are at the very least going to see some congestion possibly a a longer term reversal for the stock whether we're going all the way back down here who knows of course we will judge that in terms of vpa analysis and you can see how we had rising rising price here but the volume was really not supportive it's actually falling away quite a little bit here from the from the initial surge higher so again the vpa lessons there marrying up with our vrsi indicator um, analysis also and that's precisely how to use it all the time now we're going to move to N nvidia again another popular stock one i'm sure you're familiar with let's start with the dailies pop open the dailies and have to resize all this because obviously we've got some very big pressure bars here because we had a huge gap up there let's just resize all of that there we are you will need to do this on trading view just to give you perspective but there we are we saw the injection up until that point we'd been trundling along here i say trundling along uh, over 300 dollars. but there we are um not well congestion i guess but congestion with a mildly bullish tone we get a little bit of an injection here and then we get a serious injection here on earnings on up we go but the trend higher is really not uh, accelerating very quickly it is to the upside but again if you look at uh, you put an angle through there it's going to be i don't know 15 degrees 20 degrees something like that to the horizontal so not uh, racing up just climbing nicely and again we see from the initial injection we see the decline in the height of the pressure bars as we would expect and we're back down to this level now where we're oscillating around the fulcrum because the stock is now in a, a relatively extended congestion phase and in that case we have to be patient and wait for the next breakout move up to the weekly on that one a very similar picture there if we just close that down there we are and we see this uh, big big uh, increase and again i point out the fact that this is relatively shallow this is relatively steep through here so we're seeing a big injection of pressure here and it'll be interesting to see how far this falls away and whether the bullish momentum can be maintained and continue on higher for the stock in due course and of course the, the monthly will show you a similar uh, idea there we are very supportive in exactly the same way we would want to see with our volume bars on price rising volume and vi rising price all confirming the the bullish nature in the longer term for the stock so that was nvidia then we're going to look at next one of course is another one that needs no introduction which is tesla there we are and where are we the tesla tesla's been interesting as well let's just pop this up onto the daily resize that so we've got everything in in the screenshot there we go and just pull these down so they're in size as well there we are just move that down a little bit oops there we are give us a bit more space um a perfect example i couldn't uh, if i was going to draw a schematic of a of a bullish trend um on a on a slide then this is probably what i would draw um, because first of all i would suggest that uh, we're seeing this bearish phase come to an end and we're moving step down in a in a very measured way back down to the fulcrum we see a congestion phase with very small bars top and bottom and then we see the takeoff in our in our bullish phase to the upside and the the uh, the pressure bars are marching northwards as uh, in lockstep with the price action which is precisely what we want to see it's maintained up here and then it drops away a little bit here and we do see a move to the underside of the fulcrum but then very quickly we move back into the bullish phase again but in the last uh, where are we week week and a half couple of weeks or so we've seen a, a reversal in that sentiment we have gone from a light blue straight into a dark brick red which which signals immediately that we're seeing a uh, a demonstrable and important change in sentiment so we've gone to a tall bar as well we're not seeing a short bar we've got a tall bar also and that's really giving us a strong clue that yes we're seeing some some decent bearish sentiment take hold here and the height of these is is being maintained so 
you know, this is a, a, a reasonable uh, bearish trend that is now developing. It's not it's not developing in a price waterfall as of yet because it's sliding lower. But nevertheless, it is bearish and we are very much in bearish territory for the stock for the time being. And you can see on the pre-market here, the pre-market is currently trading at 247 spot 15 down from the close of last night at 251 spot 45. So we've got a four dollar decline on the stock as of the pre-market. But you can see that's uh, come off the low already. Uh, so it may well be there's some buying coming in there. We will see that's on the daily. Let's look at that on the weekly. And very much the same sort of uh, ideas, as you can appreciate. Lovely rising trend, rising pressure bars, great stuff up into the top here. And we're now into this congestion phase. So we see the, the, uh, the pressure bars, A, changing color and B, starting to rotate back down towards the fulcrum. And we will see if that migrates into stronger bearish momentum in due course. Finally, up onto the monthly. And we'll just resize that one. There we are. Again, all the lessons, all the takeaways that um, I've described here, you can see there the decline here, the stepping down, the, the increase in volume pressure. It's all here for you as described by the indicator. And of course, as always, we are constantly looking at our volume charts for confirmation of that. A couple more. Let's have a quick look at Meta which again is a, a stock that's a very, very fluid, very liquid, very, very popular, done really well. Um, let's just have a look at that on the daily, resize it, there we go. Very nice trend. Interesting though, at the start here, let's just pull that down, so it's quite tall, that one. There we go. We saw the injection here on earnings, big, big uh, volume, uh, a big, big pressure bar came in initially. And really that, um, that injection drained away and that's no great surprise because we've jumped we jumped a huge amount on those earnings so it was no surprise to see profit taking a slackening of that trend no surprise at all and then we then we sort of settle into the trend if you like because it starts to develop nicely and it's developing at a nice angle it's not scary it's not dramatic it's not uh, weak it's just a nice steady trend the height of the pressure bars is very consistent we drop a little bit here as we move into the second phase of that trend. We get a nice injection here, so an increase in, in the momentum there. Then we see a reversal here. What's interesting is you've got narrowing spreads, and probably if we look at the volume chart, we would see volume coming in, some buying, stopping volume, because that would be anomalous. So we'd see buying coming in there and probably more here. And now we've seen it uh, gaps up, pressure injection here, falling away a little bit. But the pressure seems to be maintained in bullish tone at the moment for the time being. So another fascinating example there. That was on the daily. Let's look at the weekly in the weekly context. There we are. Pull that down. Got some very, very large uh, downside bars, pressure bars here on the, the trend lower. But then again, as you can see, in the initial uh, reaction there where it was steep, we get high pressure, but then as that bearish trend flattens and goes into more of a gentle decline, then so do the pressure bars. They're confirming the, the fact we are maintaining bearish sentiment for sure because we're below the fulcrum. And then we get a further injection right at the end of it before they flatten off. We go back to the fulcrum of zero and then we start to see our pickup into this really, really solid uh, and supportive bullish trend. The pressure bars are maintaining their height. They're giving us that confidence to hold that particular stock for the longer term. No reason to get flicked out of it just yet. Pre-market's down a, a dollar or so, a little bit over a dollar, but absolutely no reason to exit because the even the, the milder blue here is still maintained at a decent height. So again, a very, very nice solid trend there and a similar picture on the monthly as you would expect. Look at these uh, soldiers here of, of pressure marching up northwards as in support of our trend, which is also marching north at the same time. The reversal here was strong, denoted with our high uh, pressure bars to the downside. But then as that diminishes, they diminish equally quickly too. And we reverse into our bullish trend to the upside. Very, very nice to see. 
So that's Meta. And finally, we've got AMD, which is Advanced Micro Devices. Let's click on that one. There we are. Let's just have a look at this one on the daily. Pull that down for you. There we are. And really, all the same lessons that I've been uh, covering here uh, explained on the, the uh, sorry, I've gone to the weekly. I beg your pardon. Uh, let's just start on the daily. There we go. Let's just pull that down. And these have gone off the scale. So there we are. That's it. And it really just brings it all into focus. It really describes um, a congestion phase, which we see all the time. And this is the sort of price action you will see in congestion. Very narrow. The spreads, of course, will be relatively tight. And there won't be much going on in terms of volume. So we, we know we're in a congestion phase. We're oscillating somewhere between, what, 110 and 120. Uh, it's a $10 range. And if you're a breakout trader, all you have to do is one thing, and that's just be patient because no stock, no currency, no future, uh, no commodity, no ETF can ever stay in congestion for an extended period. At some point, it has to break away. And when it breaks away, it will break away on a trend because it's all about Wyckoff's second law of cause and effect. The longer that the cause go on, goes on, in other words, the congestion phase, then the more pronounced and extended should be the trend because I can think of many analogies, but it's rather like um, filling up a large a barrel of water. You're, you're filling up a huge um, container with water, let's say a 50 litre drum. So you've got 50 litres of water there to last you. If you're sailing, for example, or you're, you're on an expedition, you've got a very large drum of water, which should last you a long, a long time. If you only took a five litre drum of water and the congestion phase was only quite small, that's only going to last you a short time. And that's the sort of analogy you think of when you look at cause and effect. It's the size of that cause and the consequent effect. Now, of course, that comes back to time. If we are in a congestion phase on a daily chart, then consequently, we would expect to see in terms of a long term, that may be a few weeks. If we see congestion on a weekly chart for a long period in, in inverted commas, that may last for months. And consequently, down onto a monthly chart, if we see one that goes on for a couple of years, which they do, we should expect to see that trend develop for many years to come. And that's how it develops. And that's what it comes down to. So when you're in a congestion phase like this, great opportunity. Just be patient. Set your, set your levels, support, support and resistance levels, top and bottom. Wait for volume to confirm on the breakout, and then it becomes a potential opportunity to invest in, provided it goes to the upside, of course. It may well go to the downside, assuming that uh, you're looking to invest in that for the longer term. That's on the daily, pretty much the same on the weekly. We're in congestion here, as you can see, and uh, really not going anywhere at the moment in the short term. And indeed, on the monthly time frame, let's just pull that down, make it look a bit neater there. You can see, indeed, We've had quite a degree of, of weakness here, a lot of bearish sentiment in this trend run down here. We've got back into bullish. This was a very nice trend extended for three or four years, but we've reversed very sharply. This doesn't look particularly encouraging, this particular candle here, nor indeed does this with the wick. So we've got doges all over the place here in this area. here, And as I said, it's just a question of being patient. The bullish sentiment there is draining away. It's uh, simply a question of being patient and waiting for the various signals to come along, which, of course, will come in addition to our VPA analysis. So those are the seven stocks that I wanted to cover for you in this uh, video, where particularly we looked at very much the slower time frames. But I hope that you can see from my explanations here that you use the indicator in precisely the same way that you do in any other time frame, any other instrument makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. And of course, everything is underpinned by our volume price analysis. I cannot stress that too strongly. So thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Lots more videos to come as always. See you soon and bye for now.